Thank you for joining the Alliance for Peace Building for the second video in our Creativity in Crisis series. This video complements the rapid emergency response surveys that we saw can provide a relatively low-cost, fast, and adaptive tool in emergency situations. But how do you find respondents to contact via phone? What are the different sampling techniques used to develop samples in emergency situations when access to respondents is limited? Let's find out in our two-part video on data sampling techniques. The Rapid Emergency Response Surveys were implemented at the local, national, and global level. Each of these levels of surveying requires different types of sampling strategies. We will focus only on the national level in this video. The Rapid Emergency Response Surveys conducted phone surveying in Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan, and Yemen. These countries presented different challenges, so developing a sample required different techniques in each country. Nigeria presented the perfect situation to adapt from in-person to mobile phone surveys. They had already conducted a nationally representative survey that included phone numbers and consent from survey respondents. There are many advantages of using a sample from a previous survey. It helps minimize legal implications because some countries do not allow large numbers of unsolicited phone calls. It also leads to increased response rates and overall data collection because you've already established rapport with your respondents. 80% of interviews in Nigeria were successful. It's also fast because it cuts out complications from negotiating with phone providers to provide randomized lists and reduces the cost of sending bulk SMSs. Finally, it allows for comparability with data collected in the first survey to increase the representativeness of the intended population and ensure overall higher quality data. In our second country case in Somalia, previous surveys like in Nigeria did not exist. However, it was possible to use administrative population contact lists. More often than not though, these lists are usually unavailable, unreliable, or severely outdated. Recognizing these limitations, they decided to send bulk SMS to this population contact list to generate an alternative random sampling. This method requires negotiating with network providers or other administrative services to gain access to phone number listings. The bulk SMSs can be geographically targeted to ensure representation of crisis-affected populations rather than a countrywide sample. In Somalia, only 65% of the respondents who answered the bulk SMS completed the survey. This approach compromised the representativeness of the population since only those who lived in the targeted area and replied to the bulk SMS were eligible to be surveyed. This approach casts a wide net as we do not know the total number of SMSs that were sent, successfully or otherwise, so we are not able to determine the actual response rate for the overall survey. It can also be quite expensive since you need to negotiate or pay for access to these population contact lists. In the third case, in South Sudan and Yemen, neither previous surveys nor population contact lists existed. To overcome this barrier, the researchers used a technique known as random digit dialing, or RDD, to generate a sample. RDD can save time because you're not wasting time calling non-existent or disconnected numbers like you more than likely would with outdated population lists. However, response rates are unpredictable. On average, only 10% of the numbers called resulted in successful interviews which prolongs the overall survey's duration. So how does it work? A machine learning algorithm identifies a small set of verified existing numbers in the region of operation. From these phone numbers, country codes, area codes, mobile phone operating codes, and unique digits are identified. In this example, the last seven digits of the number are unique. The algorithm will then randomly generate those last seven digits to create mobile phone numbers that are likely to exist in the specified area of interest. Join us for the second part of this video focused on additional triangulation sources you can employ to strengthen data collected from random sampling techniques.